Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Drew's Adventures. I'm joined with Werner and Heather today and we are exploring this ghost town in South Australia. Very remote little place. Most of this town appears to be abandoned, if not all of it, perhaps bar one or two properties. Just having a walk around, as you can see, general state of um, abandonment in all of the buildings here, almost all of the buildings here. So we're going to have a look at some of these houses and have a look inside and we'll see what we can find today. Let's do it. As you can see, here's your view from the front porch. Okay, so I'm just entering in the front door of this property. Have a look at this. Here's Werner from Werner's Adventures, and I will leave links to Werner and Heather's channels each in the description below. Wow, this has been left in time. Have a look at this. Very outback, old style place. I wonder what's in some of these books. I wonder if we can flip one over. Oh, it's just receipt books and things. Wow, there's old magazines here. Check that out from the TV Week. We've got the Bulletin, we've got TV Plus. It's an old magazine with uh, Margaret Ehrlich, I think it says. There's an old repellent over here. Certainly would need that out here. This is very important in the outback, that's for sure. Let's have a little look around. We've got magazines, newspapers, little box here. Something just moved over there. I don't want to get bitten by a snake if there is any snakes in here. Let's have a look over here. This oh, must be one of the bedrooms. Look at that whole heap of books just left behind. National Geographic magazines. We've got some boots and old jars here for preserving things. Wow, old shoe there. What have we got here? Here's the kitchen. Wow, check that out. What a Super old kitchen this would have been. An old cassette tape there. I don't know what it's got on it. What's it got? Bullseye. Bullseye. There you go. Something to do with bullseye. Uh, old cooking pot there. Check that out. And there's the old fireplace. That would have to be date back to the 1800s easily. You've got the Simpson cooker there. What was the sink just here near the window? We've got some cupcake trays and some cutlery, old bottles. I wonder what this bottle's got on it. Oh, can't read that very well. Something or rather. Here we have an old Ever Ready battery. And we've got an old Hoover there. Actually, my friend Stuart has one just like that from Stuart McPhee Train Photography. Ooh, what have we got here? An old, old novel there. Uh, some sauce bottles by the looks, some jars. And a lot of uh, these bottles, which are plastic, I think, 
don't know what they were, maybe methylated spirits or something. I really don't know. Hmm. It's very, very old. There's what's left of the curtain there. And the window of this little bedroom. Let's go for a wander and we'll check out property number two. We'll have a look at today. Let's see what we have. We have a side of a bus actually attached to this one. That's incredible. Rather sad really to see places go to rack and ruin, but that is exactly what occurs when townships and people and places no longer, I suppose, fulfill their needs anymore. Here we go, and up to the front door here. The golden rule, of course, is to take only photos, leave only footprints. Okay, so this one here does seem to have a bit of a dropped floor. Oh, here we go, we've got more books here, Reading for Pleasure series. Really dusty old couch there. There's your front window view. You can see that hole distantly out in the background. Beautiful old wooden door. And the old door lock there. This one I think may date back some time as well. Perhaps not as old as the one next to it that we just looked at, but little Christmas card there left behind. Let's go over here. Oh, a lot of books. Definitely before the days of um, computers, I would imagine, to have this many books. I mean, I don't know about anyone else, but I certainly don't quite have this collection of books at home. We've got Mr. Elandlings Builds His Dream House. Hmm, there you go. But Woman's Day, what's the date on that? The date on that is May 25th, 1982. There you go. How to make the most of your eyes, beautiful light eyes, beauty guide. We've got Australian Fishing Magazine. Shout out to Fluff. Got the Australian Fishing Magazine there. Uh, we've got... We've got, what have we got here? New Idea, Newsweek, New Idea. Some of these are really, really old books. I mean, not just because the dust is on them, but I reckon a lot of them would have been hand-me-downs from whoever lived here. But Adventures in Two Worlds, A Matter of Conviction. Let's have a look over here. We've got... The Last Wave, The Naked Ape, oh gosh, that's a <laughs> unusual book when that was uh, published, maybe the 60s or 70s. Let's have a look, what have we got? Um, okay, let's say it just says The Naked Ape. 1967, there you go. So this is a first print. Wow, okay. I really don't know, but this looks like some academic -y book about human evolution, I'm going to guess. <laughs> Fascinating. What have we got over here? We've got the Reader's Digest books. What have we got over here? We've got some children's books as well. This is very interesting. Let's have a look. Ooh, okay, that's a bit of a gruesome find. We've got a, I think that was a dead goat right there. This has got the fireplace. This would have been the kitchen, as you can see. Very, very old, old place here. Let's go over here to Oh, here we go. Here's Heather. 
Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. When is racing ahead, I'm slowing down through and through. Yeah. Old bed there. Wow, look at the old headboard. Be for the bed. I don't know what this is out here. This must have been another bedroom, I would imagine, or an outhouse, outbuilding. There's your view to the backyard now through there. And we've got the back porch and the veranda out here. Truly old, truly very, very old, this place. Let's have a look at this. This might have been the bathroom, which was that little tiny bus piece that we could see attached to this house. That was pretty cool. They must have made it into a little bathroom. The ingenuity of people who live in the Australian outback it's really quite incredible. These are four old electrical transformers that have just been left out here. Huh. Probably the old old oil type transformers. So they would have been part of the South Australian uh, energy network, which was known as ETSA, Electricity Trust of South Australia, back in the day. And for some reason they've just been left here Here's the little front garden of the property we just had a look at. And uh, just go for a wander around here. And we've got a planter bed there. A little tiny square piece there. And there's this house and the first house that we've just explored so far. So let's have a look around and see what other places we can find here in this little abandoned outback town. You can just imagine that this would have once been quite a bustling little place, I would imagine. But unfortunately, like I said, towns sometimes lose their purpose or their place in society, which is very unfortunate. But it does give us a window into the past and uh, gives us sort of a, I suppose, a sense of this is where we were as humans when places like this were uh, in their heyday and where probably many a family would have had incredible memories and thoughts and enjoyed living as a community out here back in those times. Let's continue our wander. There's a lot of um, locusts around here. Ooh, it's gruesome. Yeah, yeah, here we go. So we're going to have a look inside the old schoolhouse. Yes. Wow, not much left. But you sure can tell that it would have had blackboards on those walls. And here looks to be either a blackboard or a pinboard. And there's the old lock for the back of the school here. And this here, these appear to be original steps. 